Clearwater Beach, just a few miles away from Dunedin, Florida. Lots of fans out for the sun. Lots of fans here at the ballpark. Rays and Blue Jays coming right up. In Central Florida, baseball, it's exhibition baseball in Dunedin, Florida. The Blue Jay fans have turned out once again here at Florida Auto Exchange Stadium to welcome in the Tampa Bay Rays as they take on the Blue Jays. Spring training baseball here in Florida. Hello, everybody. I'm Buck Martinez along with Joe Siddle. And, Joe, the Blue Jays are 9-2 and two so far in the spring. And we've seen Jose Bautista play. Now this will be his third consecutive game. What are your early impressions of this camp for the Jays? Well, I think it's still just approaching the middle of March, and most players know that they're getting their work in. Pitchers are working on their secondary pitches. They're continuing to build arm strength with each outing, watching the velocities increase. Hitters are continuing to hone their skills with their swings, facing more and more live pitching. Most importantly, John Gibbons will use the last couple of weeks of spring training to allow these players to get ready for opening day. Most of these players know what they need to do in the month of March to prepare for that. We'll see Jose Bautista in right field for the first time today. We haven't seen Edwin Encarnacion yet, but these guys know what they have to do to get ready for opening day. Everybody has questions to answer in spring training, and for the Blue Jays, it is... Who's going to be that fifth starter in their rotation? Well, we're going to see two of the leading candidates today. It's Aaron Sanchez. He'll be followed by Gavin Floyd. If Floyd or Chavez or Hutchison, one of those other guys, can earn that fifth spot, that will allow the Blue Jays to send Sanchez to the bullpen. He can join a very elite, fearless foursome with Drew Storen, with Roberta Osuna, and Brett Cecil. That would be a good thing for the Blue Jays. R.A. Dickey you can count on probably for 200 innings, but the rest of the rotation, John Gibbons and Pete Walker will just ask for six quality innings, hand it over to that great bullpen, and allow this offense to win ball games. Aaron Sanchez put in a lot of hard work to get ready for this spring training camp, and for more on that, here's Hazel May. Buck, 23-year-old Aaron Sanchez will be making his first start of this Grapefruit League season. Expect him to throw in the neighborhood of 50 pitches this afternoon. Now, as you mentioned, you will notice that Sanchez has added 20 pounds of muscle to that six-foot-four frame of his. Catcher Russell Martin told me that Sanchez has worked very hard this offseason to get stronger. He comes into camp with a better understanding of his body, which is impressive when you consider for a young pitcher that aspect of development, Buck. You usually does not come until later on in his career. Well, the Blue Jays had a roster cut yesterday. Some of the youngsters were sent back, but there's a lot of anticipation. Edwin Encarnacion, all smiles. He hit today in the ball, in the batting cage. The Blue Jays and the Rays, exhibition baseball coming up next.
Welcome back to Dunedin, Florida. The Blue Jays and Tampa Bay Rays get ready to tee it up here on a Sunday afternoon. Aaron Sanchez will go to the mound for the Blue Jays. The Rays are in town. This is a split squad game for Tampa Bay. So Tom Foley, who is now the bench coach, will be the acting manager here today. Kevin Cash is with the other half of the team. Take a look at the starting lineup for the Rays. Brandon Geyer, the fourth outfielder, does a terrific job. Off to a good start with the bat. He's five for nine for Tampa Bay this spring. James Loney, the veteran in his 11th season, has 99 career home runs. He's not your prototypical slugger over at first base, but he can really pick it today. He's the DH in this lineup. Some of the new younger players are featured here this afternoon. Now it's time for the starting pitcher that's brought to you by Scott's Turf Builder Greenbacks Lawn Food. Get a deep green lawn in just three days. That starting pitcher for the Blue Jays today is the 23-year-old right-hander, six foot four, and now 220-plus pounder. Aaron Sanchez making his third appearance of the spring. It's his first start. He's given up three earned runs in his five innings of work. Russell Martin talked about Sanchez using all of his pitches today, and this is what Aaron has to do to show that he belongs in this rotation. Well, Sanchez is anxious to secure the spot in that rotation with the Blue Jays, and I think Joe, the Blue Jays, aren't really quite sure how they're going to sort it out just yet. And I think Pete Walker and John Gibbons will be the first to tell you it's a great problem to have when you have that kind of talent. So we are set. Brandon Geyer steps in. Here's the windup and the pitch. Cut on and bounced foul just beyond the bag at third. Geyer, he mentioned he's a very versatile outfitter. Last year he hit 265 for Tampa Bay. Eight home runs, 28 RBIs, and he had 10 stolen bases. He can play all three outfield positions. Talk about that versatility and how important it is to a manager to have that. Kevin Cash knows when he can move people around, and not just move people around, but they do a good job at most of those positions. Here's the 0 1 pitch, breaking ball in there for strike two. Joe, that's something that Sanchez can utilize once he is in the rotation. That curveball becomes more of a weapon. And that's what Russell Martin will see today. We'll see all four pitches. Look like he's coming in hard here. Deep drive down the left field line. The wind is blowing it toward the corner. It's a fair ball off the wall. Michael Sanchez gets it back in. That ball hit just about a foot inside that stripe on the wall for a double. A leadoff double for Tampa Bay off the bat of Brandon Geyer. Let's check out the defense for the Blue Jays. Saunders, Pilar, and Bautista. That figures to be the opening day outfield for the Blue Jays. Josh Donaldson's at third. Ryan going starting at shortstop. Andy Burns, he's an interesting young player. He's at second. Smoke and Martin round out the defense for the Blue Jays. Kevin Pilar enjoying a little bit more of a comfort level this spring, knowing that he will be the starting center fielder. First pitch outside to Mikey. That took for Kevin. He felt too that it doesn't necessarily mean that he can be more complacent, but he can focus a little bit more on the process now as a hitter this spring rather than the actual results. Inside, it's two and zero oh to Matuk. Another breezy day here in Dunedin, and that has been a theme all spring long. It's one thing the Blue Jays don't have to deal with in the regular season. Big stadiums, and at home, they play indoors. Ground ball. Goins will chase Geyer back to second and throw to first for the out. So Matza couldn't move the runner up. Joe, that's the Sanchez sinker. and Boy, that can be a very important pitch for him. Aaron will average around 95 miles per hour of the fastball. We have see him get it up to 96 and 98, but the biggest strength that he has, the biggest asset is that sinking movement he has. Gets tons of ground balls. We'll see the curveball. We've seen it already, but he's also got a cutter. It'll be right around 90. Russell plans on trying to use that to both sides of the plate. He'll mix in an occasional changeup as well. This is the veteran. James Loney, he is the DH here this afternoon. We mentioned his 99 career home runs a season ago. He hit 280. First pitch breaking ball for a strike. Loney, not a power hitting first baseman by any means, just four home runs last season. He was plagued by injuries and didn't have a full season. Fly ball. Pilar 
medium depth in center. Gets it back in. This guy has to hold his ground. Two outs after the leadoff double. Joe, is that what coaches and managers are looking for, is how Sanchez makes adjustments during the course of the game? What Aaron is going to have to, he's always going to rely on that heavy sinker. But as I talked about with Russell Martin today, if you want to be a starting pitcher in the rotation, you've got to get through the lineup a few times. He is going to need to utilize the other pitches. He can use two pitches out of the bullpen. We've seen the success that he's had. But now what he's doing is try to graduate to the next step, be able to move the ball around the strike zone. But more importantly than anything is to pitch. Russell really emphasized that. To do that, you've got to use them all. This is Richie Schaefer, the third baseman. Of course, Schaefer is a bit of a roadblock ahead of him with the great third baseman regular in Tampa Bay, Evan Longoria. But Schaefer's got some power. He hit four home runs in limited action last year for the Rays. For the season, Schaefer's numbers between the minor leagues and the major leagues, he had 26 home runs. But with that, you get some strikeouts. He punched out 155 times last year. Down and away, two and one. Aaron's newfound pitch last year was the cutter. And one he'll tell me is that he, throwing it arm side is very easy for him to throw it away to those left handers to that side of the plate. He has trouble when he tries to get it in on the left handers, which is his glove side. He, he just has a little bit more wrist action. He flicks it a little bit too much. He's working on that because it can really complement his sinker, which goes the other way. Strike two. It's even now. Two and two. Brandon Geyer. Slammed a double off the wall in left field. He let things off, but he has not moved up. Ground ball on the fly ball. Two outs. Foul out of play. The Blue Jays course we'll have a tough decision to make so far everybody has really pitched well in this rotation who are the candidates for that fifth spot but like you mentioned Joe nobody's ever complained about too many good arms <laughs> it's a great problem to have and John Gibbons and Pete Walker are trying to stretch all of these out Gavin Floyd will get an opportunity to follow Sanchez today stretch them all out let that dust settle make the decision at the end of spring Aaron Sanchez pitches around the leadoff double. Kevin Pillar, Josh Donaldson, and Jose Bautista will back when we come back to the lead. Blue Jays set to face a young right-hander for Tampa Bay. John Gibbons has the regulars in the order today. A lot of opportunity to see what the lineup will look like. Kevin Pillar, top of the order. Josh Donaldson, his MVP season the year, goes off to a good start with the bat this spring. Six for 13 with three RBIs. And it'll be Bautista's in right field defensively for the first time. Michael Sanders, he too. Has had a good start to his spring. Three home runs and nine RBIs for the left fielder. Healthy again and smiling. He feels pretty good about the way his spring has started on the mound. A young prospect, former number one pick of the race, Taylor Guerreri. Guerreri is in his first major league camp this season. He enters the 2016 season. Right does 
the number seven prospect, number three pitching prospect for the Rays in their system by Baseball America. Very nice season last year between high A and double A. Had Tommy John surgery back in July of 2013. But he's had a tremendous four seasons in the minor leagues. Defensively, the Rays have had problems this spring. They've committed 18 errors. That's the second most in all of baseball. It's Field, Machuk, and Geyer in the outfit. Schaefer, Potter, Franklin, and Roller from third to first. And Rene Rivera, one of the best throwing catchers behind the plate. Taylor Motters at shortstop today is a utility type player. 17th round pick of the Rays back in 2011, but he is really impressed. Bench coach today and infield coach. Tom Foley with his abilities and his very loose personality. He's had a lot of fun with the young man. 14 home runs last year in AAA while hitting 292. Kevin Pilar takes a first pitch strike and drills it into right field for a leadoff single. Boy, that was a pretty stroke, Joe. Kevin Pilar hit few baseballs very hard yesterday at Clearwater against the Phillies. He did not have a whole lot to show for it. Some good defensive plays made behind him, but this is part of Kevin right here. Last year he had the toe tap. This year he's making it a little bit more simplified. Let's that ball get deep and drilling it into right field. He really feels confident about where he's at right now. So he's hitting the ball well, swinging about, making good decisions at the plate. This is the reigning American League MVP, Josh Donaldson. Up and in. Donaldson was showing us today. He got hit by a Phillies Vincent Vasquez, the hard throwing right hander, right at the start of spring training. And he's just now getting rid of that bruise on his rib cage. Those bruises take a little while to go away sometimes. And I think that facing Velasquez yesterday, he said around the batting cage, he's still not happy. The bruise hasn't gone away yet. Got hit early in the spring, but. Now you've got the MVP of the American League facing a young man who pitched in high A and double A last year. 41 home runs a year ago for Donaldson. He and Bautista reached the 40 home run mark. Boy, you got to stay on your toes with Rivera behind the plate. He and Russell Martin are two of the best throwing catchers in all of baseball. And as a catcher, you have that extra edge with a right-handed batter at the plate. And he knows Kevin Pillar likes to run. He likes to get a very good secondary lead. He's the kind of guy you want to keep an eye on. If you get a pitch as a catcher to your arm side, your momentum's taking you there anyway. So why not? Very close play at first. These two teams play close games. And once again, the Blue Jays have had their problems playing against the Rays in the regular season. 2-0 to Donaldson. Ground ball. Bonner flips to second. Franklin with a nice turn. And they complete the 6-4-3 double play. Nice turn in the middle of the infield, and there is Taylor Motter. We talked about him, and we showed that defense. 26-year-old does a nice job, plays all around the field. Again, you're talking about a utility-type player. They know they've got lots of time with Donaldson running right there. Routine as it comes. They've had some issues at the shortstop position. They acquired Brad Miller from the Rays, but he's had some issues throwing the ball to first base. The Rays have committed 10 more errors than their opponents this spring. This is Jose Bautista. The right fielder starting for the first time in the field. Not sure about that call. Oh, and two to Bautista. Two quick outs here in the bottom of the first. Another breaking ball. This one's in the dirt. Bautista with another terrific season a year ago. 29 doubles, 40 home runs. He drove in 114 for the season. Of course, everybody knows he's in his walk year. Early in the spring, that was a topic of conversation. It seemed to calm down as we've gone deeper into March. Good cut. Bautista, Joe, you've seen this. We watch him every single day. He is in a great frame of mind. Well, he really is, and I think it really showed the other day those off-the-wall comments from Rich Gossage, Goose Gossage, about him. And, you know, he just disregarded it. He's going about his business. This is a pro that knows what he needs to do to get ready for opening day. Fights off that basketball. Yesterday, and I suggest you go online and check it out, Jose Bautista and the Philly Fanatic had quite a little warm-up <laughs> before the ball game yesterday. Breaking ball pulled foul. Philly Fanatic is the best mascot in baseball, and Bautista was out loosening up before the start of the game, and the Philly Fanatic came out. 
challenged him to a contest of calisthenics. <laughs> Very entertaining. Two balls, two strikes. Jose Bautista batting with two outs. He works the count to full. Troy Tulowitzki is on deck. Tulo batting fourth in this lineup today for John Gibbons. Here's the payoff pitch. Bounce up the middle. Franklin on the shortstop side of second. Good inning for Taylor Guerreri. program brought to you by Scott's Turf Builder Grass Seed with Water Smart Plus Coating. Grows grass quicker and thicker, guaranteed. That is the Clearwater Pier on Clearwater Beach. A great destination for visitors to this Clearwater Dunedin area. And the weather has been great lately. And lots of people have flocked to that beach area. Good crowd on hand as the local team, if you will, the Tampa Bay Rays are in Dunedin. Rene Revere, the catcher, goes after the first pitch. Ryan Goins has plenty of time. And he throws up the Rays backstop. One pitch, one out here in the second. One pitch, one out, because Aaron Sanchez can do that with that power sinker. We talked Second about it getting up to 96, 98 miles per hour, but the great movement going down in the zone. A lot of hitters catch the top of the baseball and beat it right into the ground. Sanchez has a full complement of pitches, and certainly as a starter, he has the ability to get to those extra pitches, the curveball and the cutter. This is Nick Franklin. He really got sawed off. That is deep in the kitchen. He's checking out the lettuce, tomatoes, and all the cold cuts. <laughs> well, that's 97 miles per hour all in on your hands. And if you're trying to let the ball get deep against this pitcher, you've got the wrong approach. Yeah. The only thing <laughs> you're thinking about as a hitter right there is don't hurt my thumbs. <laughs> One out. Another great pitch inside. Now, it'll be interesting to see where Russell Martin goes right here. Clearly, the fastball by Sanchez is being blown right by Franklin. But it is a spring training game where Russell knows that Aaron has to use all his pitches. Let's see if he just goes back to the fastball anyway. He did. What's your theory on 0-2 pitches? I want to make sure that it's not going to be a strike, but I don't like that term waste pitch. I don't like to ever waste pitch. That was a great 0-2 pitch because it was close to the zone. After you see those first two swings from Nick Franklin, why would you waste anything? You go right back at him, and he did with the fastball. Now he just missed with it, which is a good spot to be. You're trying to get to catch him on that inside corner or get him to swing and jam him. Now Aaron's fallen back to two and two, and the count's even. I still think it's in his favor because of that great fastball. Comes back with a fastball that strikes out Franklin. Two quick outs here in the top half of the second. 
Well, you can certainly see the approach there. And the philosophy from Russell Martin is exactly that. Read the hitter. Clearly, he could not catch up to the fastball. He just kept coming at him with the fastballs. But great movement. Wanted to come in right there. That ball sank away on Aaron. But you can get away with it because it's 96 miles per hour. That's a great illustration of just how much that Sanchez fastball moves. This is Taylor Miner, the shortstop, and he is a versatile player. Numbers a year ago as an everyday player in AAA. 14 home runs. Hit on the ground. Easy play for Josh Donaldson. Strong throw on the money. Sanchez, three up, three down. An easy hitting for the big right hander. This week, Rogers hometown hockey with Ron McLean stops in Penticton, B.C. as the Toronto Maple Leafs face the Red Wings in Detroit. Catch it tonight on Sportsnet. Buck. Thank you very much, Hazel. And what's going on this time of the year? Of course, the college basketball season is winding down. Championship weekend finishing up. And the March Madness will begin later on today. They have the brackets. They'll be announced. And... Hockey is in full swing, and the Blue Jays are in the midst of their spring training schedule. Any baseball players get involved in that NCAA tournament by any chance? Absolutely. A <laughs> big topic of conversation in the clubhouse. They compete <laughs> in everything. Troy Tulowitzki, the DH, combined numbers a year ago. Tulo had 17 home runs and drove in 70 for the season. For Colorado, before the trade, he had 300 with 12 home runs as a Blue Jay in 23 games. Eight doubles, five home runs, and 17 RBIs. What kind of a challenge does a young pitcher like Guerrero present to the veterans? Well, the one thing is he has not seen. He's going to be a little bit of, little starry-eyed facing these hitters but at the same time you know they may be big league superstar hitters but they have not seen this young man yet so the advantage can almost go to the young pitcher chop toward third that'll dribble into foul territory picked up by Richie Schaefer it's one thing because during the course of a season a lot of hitters when you think of the pitchers they're facing the guys that they've been playing against in the big leagues for four five six up to ten years so it's a real chess game you get a game like this in spring training and you get a kid coming over to pitch and he pitched in high A and double A last year. They know nothing about him. They've seen no videotape. So there's no preparation whatsoever. They're just really thinking of their approach to hitting and seeing the ball and trying to put a good swing on it. I think the one thing I always used to wonder about is how wild is this kid? Well, and I think <laughs> we saw that with Josh Donaldson in his first at bat. One, two, pitch. Upstairs for a ball. It's even at two and two. You have to believe as a younger pitcher like that and less experienced, not quite the command a big league pitcher may have. Take a look at Tulowitzki's numbers. He is one of the best run producers at the shortstop position in all of baseball. 
Doolittle's not playing shortstop today as Ryan Goins gives him a break in the field, but he's one of those shortstops that catches everything, but you wouldn't consider him to be real fast as a runner. Got on and missed as Tulowitzki strikes out. That's the first strikeout of the afternoon for Guerrero. Good pitch right there that time by Guerrero. Good movement going down in the zone. Looks like Troy swings right over top of the baseball. But you're right, it's not like Troy's going to win any 100 meter races in terms of his speed, but you look at a lot of shortstops in the game. We talked about it earlier J.J. Hardy, Cal Ripken, of course. Johnny Peralta has been a very steady. Go back to my day and Alan Trammell watching him play in Detroit. One of my favorites, but those are the things that for some reason in baseball we have this image of a fleet of foot shortstop that's not necessarily the case with all of their other skill set. I think that would be the exception in this day and age. This is Russell Martin, the fine catcher for the Blue Jays. He had a career high 23 home runs a year ago. Russell does a great job of getting his mind right as to what he needs to accomplish during spring training. He said, I got to find out more about Stroman. I want to see how many weapons that Sanchez has as a start this time. He taps to the third baseman. Well, it's very true for a catcher. Russell coming over new last year. Of course, anytime you go to a new organization, you have a bunch of pitchers that you have to learn. But he did not get a chance to see Stroman a whole lot last year because of his devastating knee injury in spring training. Saw him at the end a little bit. He stayed back from a road trip earlier this week. Got a chance to catch Marcus on the side. Also caught Drew Storen on the side. So he's trying to get acclimated with these guys. And a lot of it's just seeing the pitches, the movement on the pitches, but also what do you like to do in certain situations? First baseman Justin Smokes, a switch hitter. Batting left handed against the right handed Guerrero. First pitch strike to Smoke. Smoke had a good season a year ago. Hit 18 home runs and under 300 at bats. That's the kind of production you want to have from one of your extra guys. A guy that doesn't play every day, put up some big offensive numbers. Well, I think we're going to see John Gibbons penciling and Edwin, Edwin Encarnacion in that DH slot an awful lot this year. We'll see a lot of Chris Colabello and Justin Smoke at the first base back. Off speed pitch, fool him, and Smoke's behind 0 2. Smoke may not hit for the highest average, but he's a threat every time he steps to the plate, and that's a big deal when you're playing half your game in Rogers Center, other games in the American League East, those hitter friendly ballparks, and Justin can change the game with one swing of the bat. Inside. Guerrero thought it was a good pitch. It was headed toward the Rays dugout, but didn't get the call from Phil Cuzzy, the home plate umpire. Buries that breaking ball in front of home plate. Guerrero has exceptional command for a big power pitcher. Young guy, 12 and 7 in his minor league career, but he had a great strikeout to walk ratio throughout his minor leagues. Smoke gets sawed off of that inside pitch. Potter, the shortstop throws him out. They were in the shift. Impressive start for the young right-hander.
there in Sanchez has had a good start to his outing today. And for more on Sanchez, let's check in with Hazel May. Buck, we mentioned earlier how Sanchez has added more muscle to his frame. A catcher Russell Martin said he's also done a lot of work strengthening his core. Why is that important? Well, that's key because Martin has seen a tremendous amount of improvement as far as his balance, his stability. Now, his overall mechanics and his delivery also look very good this spring. As far as differences in his pitches from, say, a year ago, Martin says his curveball is a lot more uh, consistent. He has a little uh, cutter slider that's it's a lot tighter this go around as far as John Gibbons is concerned he says repeating his delivery of course is key but once he has that down pat with talent young guys like Aaron Sanchez uh, usually take off from there the more he pitches Buck the better he'll be now, there's no question about that Hazel and he is pitching with an awful lot of confidence right now he gets an easy ground ball off the bat of Kyle Roller well, I think we've seen Aaron Sanchez grow from a boy to a man this spring over the winter with that weight that he put on that Hazel's referring to. He is now 220 plus pounds, but he put that weight on that 6'4 frame and he wears it very well. When a pitcher talks about repeating their delivery, it's all about trying to get that same release point each and every time. If you're stronger in your core, you can be very efficient with your pitching mechanics. Look at the break on that curveball right there. That was a knee buckler. He threw to Johnny Field, the left fielder. Boy, that's such a good pitch that get me over curveball to start in it back. Let me tell you what, they raise hitters. They're watching Sanchez from the dugout before they're at bats, and they saw those two ugly swings that Nick Franklin took to start his at bat. And they said, man, that fastball is wicked today. And then you throw the curveball for a strike, and you go, now what do I do? And don't think that's not part of Russell Martin's game calling plan behind the plate. Three curveballs in a row. That has a lot of depth. As a hitter, when a pitcher's throwing 95 to 97, you see the start of that curveball, and it's up in the zone. You're gearing for that velocity, and then look at this thing come down. It just literally buckles a hitter. Joe, is that another aspect of his strength and conditioning program in the offseason, the bite on that curveball? Absolutely, and much like Hazel referred to right there, if you strengthen your core and you're in better shape physically, you can be more efficient with your pitching mechanics. When you're efficient with your pitching mechanics, it allows you to repeat that delivery and get to that release point. Johnny Field, the uh, field strikes out. He forgot his trigger. Well, that's just a case of being absolutely overmatched. He's seen 96 to 98 fastballs. He saw the knee buckling curveballs earlier in that bat. When he sees that pitch, he did not even really flinch. Back to the top of the order. Brandon Geyer doubled off Sanchez. The only hit they have first time through the order. The Blue Jays were 9 and 10 against Tampa Bay last season. And Bay has always featured good pitching, even though last year they really were hit hard by the injury bug in their starting rotation. There's a fastball strike. The projected rotation for Tampa Bay made just 86 starts during the regular season. They lost Alex Cobb in spring training. Mike Matt Moore was out much of the early part of the season. There's another weak grounder. Going scuttles it up. Sanchez breezing early on. No problem at all. He has faced 10 in his three innings of work.
Blue Jays Spring Training Baseball is live with the MLB.com at bat app. Stay connected all spring with radio broadcasts, video highlights, stats, news, and more. Download MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball on your smartphone and tablet. Thank you very much, Hazel. I've got it not working right now up here in the booth, making sure I'm up to speed on what's going on in this ball game and all around the Grapefruit League here in Florida. Another packed house here in Dunedin. Michael Saunders goes after the first pitch. Ray's playing him in the shift. That's Nick Franklin from Shallow Rank, Florida. Man. The Rays a year ago used 18 rookie players. That's a club record for a regular season. They were turning things over dramatically. Their pitching staff averaged 26.7 years. Only the Braves had a younger pitching staff in the major leagues last year. This is Andy Burns playing at second base this afternoon. Joe Burns has become a real focal point for the coaching staff here in spring training. Hey, big day against the Yankees in Tampa the other day, and he continues to show very good at-bats. Another good at-bat as he pulls one through the hole in the left. A one-out base hit. Continuing to open eyes watching is that big league staff in the dugout right there, led by John Gibbons, and it's nice for big league coaches to be able to have their eyes on young players like this because this is what happens throughout the course of the season there's conversations that go on but those big league coaches now have seen with their own eyes and they'll remember what they saw in spring training andy burns making a very good impression here at big league camp the more you see andy burns the more you like him number nine hitters ryan goins and the blue jays can play hit and run right here no score in a ball game only three hits so far ryan goins You don't really like to take the bat out of a hitter's hand early in spring training, but Goins will be asked to play hit and run during the regular season. Something he takes pride in that the Blue Jays can look to him to move the base runners. Strike two. 0-2 oh, to go. It's good sinking fastball at the bottom of the knees. Ryan certainly penciled in as the starting second baseman in this club. I asked him this morning about coming into spring training. Is that a better feeling this year? And he says, you know, he's never complacent. He understands that there's always somebody after your job. But regardless, you're getting ready for opening day, whether it's in AAA or in the big leagues. But this year, it's a little bit different mindset with what he contributed to this club last season. We were talking with Tom Foley, the bench coach of the Rays, who is the acting manager in this split squad game, and he was really praising Ryan Gomez. And asking, too, how they're going to handle things in the middle. Well, a day just like this, Gomez can give Tulo a day off at shortstop, slide in Darwin Barney at second base, for example, and it allows those things. If Donaldson needs a day, Barney can go over there, so there's a lot of flexibility in the infield. Oh, and two, one out. Taylor Guerrero, mentioned he's a former number one pick, 24th pick overall in the 2011 draft. He's had Tommy John surgery, so he's bouncing back a little bit from that. But I like the fact that he's got a good idea about moving the ball in and out. Pretty good power arm with a good curveball. That's a good combination. Missed down the stage. It's now two and two. Can certainly see how that plays very well in the minor leagues, and it has for him last year. Combined ERA under two between high A and double A for his career in the minor leagues over four seasons. Just a 1-6-1 ERA. Now how will that play when he starts facing more advanced hitters? Base hit. Oh, what a good at bat for Ryan Goins. He was down 0-2, worked it to an even count, and gets an opposite field base hit. Ryan Goins continuing to use the whole field. And what a nice approach he has to hitting. He's another one that worked on his hit, hitting a little bit, made some adjustments, 
over the offseason. You see that back kind of cocked and loaded before he gets his hands back. That allows him. The ball just traveled deep in his stance. Let it get deep and just punched it into left field. A very nice two strike approach. Seventh hit of the spring for the Blue Jays shortstop going back to the top of the order with two aboard. Kevin Pilar had an opposite field single his first time up. Joe, we had a chance to visit a lot with Kevin during batting practice, and boy, he is really a very instinctive, intelligent baseball player, isn't he? He really is. You know, we talked about his jumps in center field, getting to baseballs, and he said, you know, if I'm going to get to a ball easily, I'm not going to run as hard as I can to the spot, square up and catch it. I am going to get there, and that's what he did an awful lot last season. All of these Blue Jays do a great job of mentoring some of the younger players and all throughout the early stages of this camp. Kevin Pilar has had Roman Fields and Anthony Alford in center field during batting practice. This is chopped towards shortstop. Motter goes to second and they'll just get the one. So. Pilar bounces into the fielder's choice. 6 4. Goins moves to third on the play. I loved what Kevin had to say about mentoring and tutoring those young players. He says they're such great athletes, but they just almost need to pull back a little bit. He says these are great athletes. You put a glove on their hand and they go crazy, and that's not a good thing. So, what he's trying to do is try to tell them that they can harness those emotions, all of those attributes that they have getting to baseballs. Josh Donaldson grounded into a double play in the first. Two outs, runners at the corners. No score in this ball game. Do hitters like Donaldson relish these opportunities to drive in runs even though it's spring training? I don't think so. You know, Josh, is, of course, he's a competitor. He's going to try to drive a run in any time. But around the batting cage today, I talked about his game yesterday. And he says, you know, you don't want to peak too early. You don't want to show these guys that you're trying to do damage just yet. You want to wait a little bit and sneak up when the season starts and when things count. <laughs> As a judge, I don't think you have to worry about that. It was interesting because he talked to Nolan Arenado last night, the Colorado Rockies fine young third baseman, and he says, hey, Nolan, slow down a little bit. You're hitting too many home runs early on. <laughs> They're going to prepare hard for you. <laughs> two and out, two down. Well, Kevin Pilar, when we talked about his work with those young outfitters, too, and what he's trying to tell them, you can be a great athlete, but you have to be more efficient with your routes getting to baseballs. You can run with the wind, but Kevin talked about that first step, reading and hearing the ball off the bat, being, being very efficient with your route to the baseball. Two and one to Donaldson. Inside. Kevin Pilar has never been the most gifted athlete on his teams, but he makes up for it with awareness. He is very intuitive. He looks around. He notices things. He watches other players, other good players, and what they do. High strike. That's a full count now. I thought it was very interesting when you talked about a, a simple example of a fly ball that you're running after and if you're going to catch it out in front of you but the ball comes back a little bit don't move your glove and catch it right in front of your chest where you can't do anything with it move your feet so that you can still catch it next to your body so that then you can transfer it to your hand and make a solid throw to where you're going ball four and I load the basis for Jose Bautista first walk of the ball game issued by the river and he has pitched himself into a change. So Madison walks. He's got it out and walked. And Bautista will bat with the bases loaded. That is Matt Dominguez pinch running for Donaldson as the starting third baseman is done for the afternoon. Well, we talked about it in the open. Josh getting his couple of at bats today, and he'll slowly begin to amp it up in the last couple of weeks of spring training. Bautista is looking to go deep on that first pitch. He fouled one straight back. 
you're going to miss to Jose Bautista, you do not want to miss on the inner half of the plate. That's exactly where he is looking. Jose's playing in just his third spring game. That ball gets away from the catcher and going slides, excuse me, Burns slides in with the first run of the game, Andy Burns. Scoring on the wild pitch, that was that curveball in the dirt, and there wasn't much that Rene Rivera could do with it. Well, as a catcher, when you call the breaking ball, the one thing you have to do is anticipate more than anything that it's going to be in the dirt, and then it's your job as a catcher Everybody to get down there and beat the baseball to the spot. But sometimes when pitchers spike the pitch so severely that it lands way up in front of home plate, there's not much you can do but almost become a goalie. Rivera unable to come up with one there, and the Blue Jays take the lead. Pilar's at third, the pinch runner. Matt Dominguez is at second for Bautista now. Ball on the strike. Running fastball tied up, Jose. Bautista grounded out in the first. He is 0 for 6 in the spring. He got that one a little bit harder than it looked like now he's trying to walk off the effects of that foul ball. Jose will tell you that he's a pull hitter. That's his reputation. But when hitters miss on the inner half, that plays right into his plan. He's looking to pull the baseball, but he can handle even the ball away. He's not a big fan. He doesn't believe that someone can say that you hit the ball where it's pitched. He says, you show me a hitter that can hit the ball where it's pitched. There's just no way. But he's looking to that pull side of the field wherever the location of the pitch may be. That's why he creeps up on the plate the way he does. This ball is hit deep to left field. Up, up, and gone. Jose Bautista with his first home run of the spring. A three-run shot. Well, that plays into our story, doesn't it? <laughs> well, that's exactly what happened. The young pitcher on the mound missed where you cannot miss to this hitter and as I said Jose can handle even the ball away because he creeps towards the plate and he crowds that plate but don't miss anywhere on the plate or on that inner half and Jose introduced this young man to one of the most elite feared sluggers in all of Major League Baseball there he is up on that plate and watch this pitch come right back on the inner part of the plate maybe even on the inside corner but Jose gets the bat head out and that's a no doubter Tom Foley has come to the mound. There's going to be a pitching change here. Jose Bautista and the Blue Jays have taken a 4 nothing lead in the bottom of the third. Introducing... Well, who needs spring training? Jose Bautista in his sixth spring training at bat goes deep. His first home run of the spring. A three-run shot the left field. And that has knocked the starter out of the ball game, Taylor Guerrero. This is Adam Reefer. 
who last year pitched in New Mexico. He pitched in Yucatan, and he is a former Cardinal draft pick. Now trying to hook on with the Rays. Reefer just pitching in his fourth game this spring for the Rays, and looks like he's going to try to come in and close this frame for the starter, Taylor Guerreri, who Jose Bautista rudely introduced to one of the best sluggers in the game. How many times have we seen that with the Blue Jays? Second time through the order, they do all their damage, even if it's somebody they don't know. And Armada, the shortstop, makes a nice play on Tulowitzki, but the Blue Jays' big bats come around in the bottom of the third. They score a run on the wild pitch in three on one swing of the bat from Bautista. Brought to you by Scott's Turf Builder Grass Seed with Water Smart Plus Coating. Grows grass quicker and thicker, guaranteed. Welcome back to beautiful Florida. Another beautiful afternoon here. Lots going on around this area. A lot of water activities. You can fish, you can lay on the beach or you can come to the ballpark and watch the game that's matt dominguez taking over defensively as he entered the ball game as a pinch runner taking over in center is junior lake lake is trying to catch on with the blue jays as an extra outfielder mikey Matuk, the center fielder Grounded out the shortstop his first time up there. And Sanchez has faced 10 batters through three innings. The only man to reach the leadoff man, Brandon Geyer. Geyer hit a leadoff double, but didn't move up as Sanchez retired the next three in order. Pitchers are starting to stretch things out now, Joe. Well, we talked about it in the open about you get to that middle of March where they've all had a few appearances now and it's one thing to continue to sharpen your secondary pitches but they continue to build strength as well the velocity continues to build and now you're slowly trying to put that whole package together that's what Sanchez is doing here today we'll see Gavin Floyd follow him today and probably to do the same thing Sanchez has never thrown a hundred innings in a season and I believe and it's my personal opinion that he wasn't developed properly coming out of high school. I know he's a young pitcher, but you got to pitch to get better. Another strikeout for Sanchez. That's four. Another good fastball from Aaron Sanchez, really overpowering a lot of these raised hitters today. See Russell Martin set up down and away. Location, excellent, but it's a very defensive swing, and part of that is because of the rest of the pitches that he throws. You're trying to prepare for everything. You can't do that and hit 95 located like that. Aaron Sanchez threw 92 in the third innings last year for the Blue Jays. That's the most he's ever thrown in his professional career in the big leagues. First pitch swinging is James Loney. 
Dominguez gives it a look, but it's back out of play into the seats. Well, it goes back to what you said before, Buck. In the minor leagues, of course, you get these great young arms. So what do you want to do? You want to protect them. But really, their investments to help you at the major league level someday, if they're going to help you at the major league level, if Aaron Sanchez is going to help you, he needs to learn how to pitch in the sixth and seventh inning, get out of a jam. He needs to use all of his pitches. That's the benefit of being a starter in the minors. Loney gets sawn off and it's dribbled weakly up the first baseline. Well, I think that's the one thing that baseball in general, it's not just the Blue Jays, it's rampant, it's everywhere. You got to give these youngsters a chance to pitch, let them know what it's like to face a batter three times in a game. Let them understand what it is to feel tired and get through the eighth inning. Have struggles, not have your A game. How many starting pitchers will tell you that there's a certain number of games that I just don't have my best stuff? Well, a lot of them will say probably about a third of their games. Those are the days you have to figure it out and learn how to pitch. Breaking ball into dirt. It's one and two to James Loney. Loney is playing the role of the designated hitter this afternoon. Blue Jay fans have really turned out for these spring games and have been talking to the front office here. They talk about not having any tickets left for the remainder of the spring schedule. And the ground ball out, strikeouts and ground outs. That's what feature that's what Sanchez is featuring this afternoon. He can induce ground outs like no one around sixty percent in his young career so far and most of the time, it's that power sinker. It's very difficult to teach that movement on a two-seam fastball. If you could teach it, more guys would throw it. It's like the Mariano Rivera cutter. If you could teach it, everybody in baseball would be throwing it. You just can't do it. It's not that easy. Cleanup hitter Richie Schaefer caught looking at strike three in the first. Presents a very interesting scenario, though, for John Gibbons and Pete Walker. We talk about it being a nice problem to have. Russell Martin talked about Aaron Sanchez saying, with all of this stuff, to have that every fifth day, all season long, Russell just rolled his eyes at me and said, that's something special. And I couldn't agree with him more, so it'll be interesting to see what direction the Blue Jays head here towards the end of March. Well, obviously, the Blue Jays, after their division-winning season a year ago, they want to advance further into the playoffs, and they're going to make the decisions that they feel is best for that possibility. Hey, Sanchez won't turn 24 until Canada Day, July 1st. So certainly he's got a bright future. And he wants to be a starter. No question. 3-0 pitch. He missed with four fastballs. It's only the second raise hitter to reach against Sanchez. That's the first walk he's issued this afternoon. That's the one thing with young pitchers. You can see the veteran Martin out to talk to Sanchez. You've got to make adjustments. You throw a couple of pitches out of the zone, you've got to get back, back in the zone. And you talked about the fatigue, and there's John Gibbons right there. He likes what he sees today, there's no question. And when you get a pitcher like that right now, four straight balls after he's been pitching very well, what's Russell Martin do? He goes out there, gets back, probably talking something about his mechanics right now or his release point. How do you want to do this? Do you want to start first pitch curveball right here? Maybe get that release point back out front. These are the things where a veteran catcher can really help a good young arm. Rene Rivera, the catcher, and now that's four, five straight balls thrown by Sanchez. He misses another fastball down and away. Great test for Aaron right here as a pitcher. When you lose it a little bit, it's just what we were talking about. This is where he has to figure it out, get this final out of the inning. Missed again, and Schaefer has to hold as Martin got on it quickly. Well, you're right. If you have a hiccup like this in a regular season against the Red Sox, the Yankees, or the Orioles, then you're going to make a mistake. Somebody's going to hit a two-run home run off you. So you have to be able to make quick adjustments. And that's why in spring training here, too, it's not all about the results because it may not be the A squad lineup here for the Rays. It's more about what do you see? What's the break ball and the curveball look like today? How crisp is the fastball? How's his location been? You have to really isolate on Aaron himself and how he's throwing the baseball. And Russell Martin is the best to relay that information to the coaching staff.
easy 94. It is easy. We talked about that six foot four frame that he put 20 plus pounds on. He wears it very well. He had a very loose arm anyway, but he's got that size that leverage when you're a big guy like that. You get on top of the baseball work downhill. Dominguez will go to second. They get the lead runner to end the inning. Sanchez with a little bit of a hiccup. A two out walk, but he is able to close out the Rays in the fourth. Is through four innings has allowed just one hit and a walk and Joe he has been impressive. Well he looked very good. We're seeing that 95 to 98 miles per hour. Some good sinkers. We saw a couple of those cutters today. We also saw some outstanding curveballs. Aaron trying to utilize all his pitches and show that he belongs. He really wants that last spot in this rotation today. Nice job by Russell Martin behind the plate. Four very good innings right into a little hiccup with that walk in his last inning of work but four strikeouts that's a power arm with some more ground balls he did what he needed to do to stay in that competition for that last spot no question and sanchez that walk is the only walk he's allowed this spring he has four strikeouts to increase his spring total to 10 strikeouts that's a great ratio for a power pitcher a lot of times you get these power arms that have trouble with the strike zone so the walks can really haunt them but not for aaron he's been in the zone very well Four nothing Blue Jays as Russell Mark will lead things off. New pitcher for the Rays is the youngster Jacob Faria. Faria working in his third game this spring. Split between high A and double A last year. Very nice season with that ERA under two. Russell Martin takes the first pitch strike. We're pleased to be joined by Aaron Sanchez, who has joined us from the dugout. Aaron, congratulations on a good outing today. Thank you, guys. Aaron, we have talked a lot about it. You and I talked earlier in the spring about your off-season program and how you have added some muscle to your frame. Does it translate? Can you feel the difference on the mound when you're working? Yeah, everything's just so much more easier. Um, like I said to many times before, what I thought last year was right in my delivery wasn't necessarily right. Um, this year being more stable, stronger, uh, I'm easier to, it's easier for me to get to those positions without even thinking about it. And I think that was uh, the biggest thing, you know, prior to coming into camp this year. Um, was not repeating my delivery, and, and I think that's, that's all cleaned up. It's just about executing pitches out there. Aaron, we saw some excellent curveballs today, probably some of the best I've seen from you all spring. Can you attribute the better curveball to your physical conditioning as well and strength? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like I said, I, I think last year I got a tendency to kind of fall backwards when, when I'm going to the plate, um, and then and then I'm already defeated. I can't even I have no chance to execute the pitch. Uh, this year it gives me a better chance to, to stay in, in my delivery a lot longer and, and have better depth on my pitches. You got a veteran catcher in Russell Martin after you had the two out walk to Schaefer. Martin comes to the mound. What's that conversation all about? Hey, I'm just giving you a breather. So what? Let's get this guy and get back in the zone. 
when you miss like that, Aaron, that at bat, we talked about it up here, but young per pitchers, when you do hit that little roadblock, you've got to figure it out. What did you do out there to figure it out the next batter? Obviously, Russell coming out there, giving me the confidence to get, to get the next hitter. It's huge. Uh, but I understand what type of stuff I got. And if I just stay in the zone, and, and, and I'm always one pitch away um, with that sinker that I have. So I try not to I try not to let things get too big on me. Um, just go out there and execute a pitch, take it one pitch at a time. Uh, fell behind him 2-0, was able to get back in the zone and, and get out of that. Aaron, you're a California guy. You spent the majority of the offseason down in Duke with your pal yeah. Marcus Stroman. Take us through those workouts and how much that really got you focused for the spring training camp. Well, I got hurt in June last year, and uh, I knew I needed to do something. And, and my, my mindset was just kind of get through the year and, and, and understand that I got a ton of work to do in the offseason. Um, our workouts in Durham were get up, eat, work out, come home, eat, nap, and we do that twice a day. <laughs> um, it was super intense, but it's understand, understanding that I knew I needed to, to do what I did, and I couldn't be more prepared coming into camp. You and Marcus have grown up in this organization together. He came out of college. You came out of high school, but you're great friends. How does that friendship work for you as far as a baseball player how does that help you compete basically a friendly competition with your best friend yeah it's perfect uh, to have somebody that's in your corner at all times also competing with you also pushing you also trying to get the most out of you I mean it's the best situation obviously you guys know how we interact um, it's nothing but fun that we try to have uh, we pick each other's brains non-stop and I know Aaron nothing you want more and Stroh wants more yeah. than to be partners in that rotation how is it for you in spring training Gavin Floyd of course is going yeah. to follow you today yeah uh, I mean obviously we, we talked talked about this years before uh, last year we thought that was our chance he had to see, obviously he got hurt um, so we'll see what happens this year I, I can't control I can't control the, the decisions they make so I'm just gonna go out there and continue executing pitches and pitching the way I have um, they'll, they'll they'll make that decision um, Glavin's throwing pretty well so it, it comes down to what makes the team better if they feel that's uh, me in the pen then I guess that's what we'll, we'll figure out when, when the time comes Aaron, congratulations on a good outing and a great start to your spring. Thanks for your time. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. That's Aaron Sanchez, who had a great outing today. Had a walk and four strikeouts. He breezed through this Tampa Bay switch squad lineup. He and Marcus Stroman, of course, best friends. They have been together quite a while. They've pitched together in just about every level of this organization, and they are determined to pitch together in the rotation whether it's this year or next year you can bet they're going to be a wicked one-two punch somewhere down the line well they certainly will and if you're the Toronto Blue Jays or a fan of the Toronto Blue Jays how about having a rotation led by Marcus Stroman with Aaron Sanchez to follow and that's those guys are under club control for a few more years that's a long-term thing very nice thing to plan forging ahead I think it's imperative that for long-term success you have homegrown talent. They play with a lot of pride. They're playing with their friends. They're playing with their teammates. They're playing with guys they have grown up with, and they want to represent their organization. And especially when they've played for one organization, and that name in the front of that jersey means even more. Michael Saunders strikes out. Jake Correa strikes out the side in his first inning of work. Go ahead to the fifth for nothing Blue Jays.
Some great soccer action coming your way. Toronto FC continues their road trip against New York FC. That's today on Sportsnet One. Thank you very much, Hazel. It is a breezy day down here in Florida. That is Sand Key, just south of Clearwater Beach. A lot of Canadians know all about this part of Florida. Spent a lot of time down here to catch up with the Blue Jays. This is Gavin Floyd. As we mentioned at the top of the show, Gavin is in that competition to catch a spot in the rotation. Gavin coming back from injury, just pitched in seven games for the Cleveland Indians last season. This is his third appearance of the spring. He's made two starts. So again, trying to extend those innings. John Gibbons and Pete Walker giving Sanchez the start today and flip-flopping a little bit so they both get an opportunity. Both are going to be stretched out, and that's the competition. Jesse Chavez is in that competition. Drew Hutchison, of course, is on the outside. Seeing who can fill out that last spot in the rotation. Whoever does not fill that spot will go down and strengthen that bullpen. Going to be an interesting couple of weeks as the competition intensifies toward the end of spring training. Gavin Floyd will work to Nick Franklin, the second baseman. He struck out against Sanchez in his only at bat. First pitch swinging. This ball is hit high and deep. That's Ezequiel Carrera who has come into the game defensively and he'll play it off the wall. Lead off double for Nick Franklin. Aaron Sanchez gave up a leadoff double to start the game, and Floyd does the same first batter he faces. Nick Franklin looking first pitch from Gavin Floyd coming right in fresh out of the bullpen, and Floyd trying to get over a fastball early in the count. Franklin was up to the task of slapping it hard off that left field wall. So immediately, Gavin Floyd will pitch out of the stretch. This is Taylor Motter, the shortstop. He goes after the first pitch and pops it out of play. Floyd will be around 92 miles per hour with the fastball, curveball, cutter, and changeup. The cutter's been a big pitch for him. He'll throw it almost a third of the time. We'll see that cutter start middle, middle away, and try to cut away from the right-handed batter. Pitchers just try to get off the barrel of the hitter, get it towards the end of the bat. Gavin Floyd has had more than his share of injuries throughout his career. He's had Tommy John surgery. He fractured his elbow twice. Once in June of 2014 and then in March of 2015 during spring training with the Cleveland Indians a year ago. So after the second time he fractured his elbow, he called up Steve Delabar, the Blue Jays, and said, I know you've gone through this. Tell me about your rehab. And they both have shared experiences about that unusual injury. This is a breaking ball that's popped into the seats out of play. Jared Parker of the Open A's just went through a similar injury, fractured his elbow, and he's had nothing but injury problems in his young career. Very promising young pitchers dealt with a fractured elbow. Well, Floyd was very skeptical when he reached out to Delabar to ask him about his health and, and, and coming back combined. They've got 17 screws in their elbows. Delabar with nine and Gavin Floyd with a plate and eight screws holding that elbow together. Big sweeping breaking ball is well out of the zone. You know, Jim, that's one thing that has improved over the years. And of course, we'll remember I'll remember more than you, but Sandy Koufax had to retire early in his career. And it, maybe a few years later on, Koufax would have gone under the knife, and it would have been Sandy Koufax surgery instead of Tommy John surgery. Of course, Tommy John, surgery named after him, went on to pitch for several years. What the trainers and doctors have figured out, not only in the medical procedures to fix these devastating injuries but the rehab process and getting everybody back to health has been remarkable Floyd now working with nobody out in the man at second a 2-2 count on Taylor Motter breaking ball well out in front of home bounce nice play by Russell Martin
The Floyd has had some nice seasons, of course. A major league veteran that can really provide a lot. And I think the health is going to be the key thing right here. But if he can fit into the Blue Jays' plans, either in the rotation or the bullpen, it's a nice piece. The health is going to be a key thing. Only pitching in seven games last year for the Indians. High fastball and Motter strikes up. Floyd elevating that good heater gets the first out of the top half of the fifth. You said it right there, elevating the fastball after spiking a couple of breaking balls down in the dirt. You change that plane as a pitcher, elevating the fastball. Motter, it looks good because it's up near your eyes as a hitter. It just cannot catch up at 94 miles per hour. Kyle Roller, the first baseman. Goes after the first pitch and hooks it foul down the right field line. Pitchers to be successful as a catcher calling a game, you want to try to keep three concepts in mind. It's moving the ball in and out, back and forth by changing speeds, and up and down by changing the plane. And that's what Floyd did exactly right there, striking out Motter. Gavin Floyd enjoyed the most success while pitching with the White Sox. There's a deep drive to center. Junior Lake to look up, and it's off the wall. Dick Franklin is around third. He's headed for home as Kyle Ruler picks up an RDI double off the center field fence. Good piece of hitting here by Roller, not trying to do too much. Russell Martin trying to set up a little bit away, and that ball's out over the plate, but Roller stays right on it, driving right back through the middle of the field, short hopping the fence in center, 400 feet from home plate. So Roller picks up the RBI, and, and the number nine hitter, Johnny Field, the left fielder. He goes after the first pitch and bounces it to Matt Dominguez. Easy out. One thing we have noticed in this spring training camp, not only the depth of the pitching staff, but the depth of the defensive players. Matt Dominguez was an everyday third baseman for two years with the Astros, and he could really play third base. And that's what you're looking for. If Josh Donaldson should happen to go down, to an injury for a couple of weeks or a month and you bring up a guy like Dominguez you're not looking for him to contribute a whole lot offensively you want a solid glove at third base that's what he provides you allow the big boys throughout the lineup to continue to carry the load offensively Blue Jays have the best offensive team in the majors last year and if you lose one of your regulars you want to fill it with a guy that can catch it first and foremost and it's a guy that's been there he's got a lot of major league experience and he's had success at that level you're not bringing up a young kid asking him to do a whole lot Brandon guy batting for the third time this afternoon he doubled and grounded out Another elevated fastball effective against Guy. This is the thing with Gavin Floyd. This is a veteran. We'll talk about that veteran savvy, that experience that they have. But Gavin's still got pretty good stuff, too. We see good life on his fastball, 93, 94 miles per hour. Pretty good break on some of the curveballs he's seen. He's just trying to kind of continue to hone it in right here, get it in the zone. And he gets that breaking ball down and away from Guy. Gavin Floyd strikes out Brandon Geyer to end the inning.
MLB.TV Premium, everything you have come to expect and more. There's a new low price for 2016. Watch every out-of-market game of all 30 teams live in true HD on over 400 supported devices. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.TV for details. But Thank you very much, Hazel. Rays have closed the gap. It's now 4-1. Toronto. Blue Jays are nine and two with a tie over the spring. Of course, they will open up their regular season schedule right here in Central Florida, Tropicana Field in St. Petersburg. They'll have a season opening series against Tampa Bay. Four game series. It all starts on April third, three weeks from today. Andy Burns. Singled and scored the first run of the ball game on a wild pitch. Jacob Beria struck out the side in his first inning of work in the fourth. He struck out Russell Martin, Justin Smoke, and Michael Saunders. That's blowing toward the seats, and it'll be out of play. Joe. The Tampa Bay Rays, it seems like they find pitchers just about everywhere they turn. They do a terrific job of developing young pitchers. Well, and it's one area. If you're going to stockpile talent in one place on the field, it's on the mound. And then what you can do, the ones that develop and can help you at the major league level are great assets. But the other ones you develop, you can use in trades. This is a different team now. It's apples and oranges to the Blue Jays in terms of payrolls and the budgets that they're allowed. Third ball lifted into left field. Johnny Field makes the cut. Springs is retired on the fly ball. Everybody's looking for good pitching. When you think about Tampa Bay, that's what you think about. The top rotations last season, even though the Rays had a losing season, they were 80 and 82. They have a top rotation in the American League with a 363 earned run average, and that despite the fact. They had just 86 starts from their projected starting rotation. When they played in the World Series in 2008, five pitchers made all but nine starts that season. And that was before David Price. <laughs> Ryan Goins puts a charge in it to the deep part of center field. Mikey Matu. Runs it down the center fielder. Got a good break on it. The wind is blowing in, and that ball looked like it was headed out of the ballpark, but it hung up for Matuk. It's one thing to see a ball off the bat, but to hear it, and that had a very good sound off the bat of Ryan Goins. I think he thought he even hit it better than that, but those flags are blowing straight in from right center field. And the pitcher is very glad for that. Uh, the Rays, of course, have the reigning Gold Glove center field in Kevin Kiermaier. And Mikey Matuk is a center fielder and can play very well out there. This is Junior Lake getting his first at bat of the afternoon. Lake came into the ballgame defensively, taking over for Kevin Lauren in center field. On the ground. Botter has it. Another good inning. Six up, six down for Feria in his two innings of work.
This the Clarkson Cup final. Great Canadian Women's Hockey League action for you. It's Calgary and Montreal up next right here on Sportsnet. Great shot from a sailboat on Tampa Bay. David Adams takes over at second base, taking over for Andy Burns, and Gio Meyer takes over defensively at shortstop for Ryan Goins. Mikey Matuk, the center fielder, made a nice running catch on Ryan Goins. He's got over two at the plate so far this afternoon. Good sinking fastball. This is a split squad team for the Rays, and that is Brady Williams, who is the double-A manager for the Tampa Bay Rays, and it's Jimmy Williams' son as he is developing as a minor league manager. And chance to meet with him. Of course, Jimmy Williams, a longtime coach for the Blue Jays, former manager, Boston Red Sox, Houston Astros, still makes his home in this area. Batu strikes out. Floyd with his third strikeout since coming into the ball game. And Gavin Floyd just freezing him on this little breaking ball. It's not a real big one. Gives up on it, but then comes down just enough to freeze Matuk. Pretty good hitter right there. It's a hitter you see that the top of the zone. You give up on it. Good late break by Floyd. James Loney with a very tentative swing on that first pitch. He may have been looking for that curveball again. <laughs> Late on the fastball this time. Floyd's getting zeroed in now. Gavin Floyd entered the ball game and gave up a leadoff double to Nick Franklin and then Kyle Roller drove in Frank with an RBI double off the wall in the center that Floyd has since settled down there's that breaking ball Excellent. everybody thought it was strike three except the umpire great sequencing right there by Russell Martin he tried to elevate the fastball on Loney 0 2 he got it up there but Loney was able to get to it to foul it off what do you do you change the plane and the speed by going down with the breaking ball nice job by Loney laying off Foul tip off the umpire. Gavin Floyd's just 33 years old. He's not certainly too old where he can't really recapture the form he had with the White Sox. He had a career high 17 wins in 2008. That's his only season compiling over 200 innings of work. He was a former number one pick of the Phillies out of Maryland drafted as a high school player fourth pick overall in the 2001 draft that's going to be a foul ball Floyd was traded to the Chicago White Sox along with Gio Gonzalez in exchange for Freddie Garcia and that's when his career really took off he had a couple of cups of coffee with Philadelphia in 2004, 2005, and parts of 2006. Another strikeout. That's three strikeouts in a row for Gavin Floyd. The Floyd is really showing the art of pitching here in this inning. Changes the sequences. Look at the target by Russell Martin. He wandered it up a little higher. Sometimes a catcher will deep by giving you the high target. And then maybe somebody from the bench or the third base coach may give him a whistle saying they're trying to elevate a pitch down in the zone. But again, freezing a raise hitter. Pitchy Schaefer, the third baseman, has struck out and walked. Floyd spent parts of seven seasons with the White Sox, and it's interesting 
talking about his time with Chicago, he said, I learned the most about pitching from a fellow named Mark Burley. Imagine that. He's not the only one. Burley has left his mark. Good cut by Schaefer, but he fouled it straight back to the screen. He's really left his mark with this Toronto Blue Jays club, too. We know we talk a lot about Marcus Stroman. Of course, Marcus calls him Papa Burley. How much he learned from him. What a great mentor. And just sitting. I think a lot of the learning is done sitting in the dugout on the days that you're not pitching, watching others, watching how they attack hitters. Marco Estrada talks about his conversations with Mark Burley. Marco said, you know, I asked Mark what he thinks about on the mound and Mark said nothing. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Looks for the catcher to put a sign down. Never shakes him off. Not too many people that can do that. That's a hanging breaking ball that stayed on the inner half and Schaefer pulls it foul. Those are the attributes of a player that you don't necessarily hear about. They certainly don't show up in their statistics. But what a value Mark Burley was to this club. Catcher Rene Rivera is on deck. Schaefer with a 3 2 count. Strike three called. Gavin Floyd strikes out the side. He's got five strikeouts in his two innings of work. We're a couple of blocks from the intercoastal okay. waterway. Beautiful Florida. Blue Jays have a full one lead. Is on the third base side. Fans, Jay's Shop is Canada's largest and only official team shop for your Toronto Blue Jays. New 2016 authentic jersey with 40th season sleeve patch available right now. Get yours today at jayshop.ca. Blue Jays are going to support that 40th anniversary patch on their uniforms during the regular season. And you can pick it up on jayshop.ca. Lots of different styles of hats and the Blue Jays and baseball in general have broken out new spring training hats and jerseys for this spring. So make sure you check it all out. Three weeks from today, the Blue Jays and the Rays will open up the regular season schedule. They'll do it at Tropicana Field, part of a three-game Sunday opening to the 2016 regular season. The Mets and the Royals will feature a matchup of the World Series opponents. They will play in Kansas City. Part of that opening Sunday schedule. The Cardinals in Pittsburgh will start things off. They'll play a 105 game. Then Toronto and Tampa Bay at 405. And then the Mets in Kansas City. The Sunday night game to start the season. Matt Dominguez hits it sharply. Nick Ryan, Nick Franklin makes a nice play of it. That was shaded 
to the third base side of second. The right fielder, number 19, Jose Bautista. Tom Foley is the acting manager with this split squad team here in Dunedin. Jacob Faria with a good outing. Retired everybody he faces. He goes two and two thirds. This is Jamie Schultz in relief of Jacob Faria, who had a nice outing, two and a third, had a three strikeouts in his outing today. Schultz made 27 starts at Double A Montgomery last season, ERA at 3.67. He goes after Bautista with the first pitch fastball, and Jose fouled it straight back to the screen. Bautista homered in the third, a three-run a home run with two outs. Fouls this one straight back. He mentioned Jose playing in the field for the first time. He is 0 for 2. He's now had seven at-bats during the spring. Edwin Encarnacion took batting practice today in the cage on the field with the rest of the team. He has been hitting in the tunnels beyond the fence in right field. Doing a lot of extra hitting. And I don't think anybody's too concerned the fact that he hasn't played yet. One and two. Bautista spoils a pretty good pitch. What we talked about in the open these players know what they have to do especially the veterans to get ready for opening day it is still barely the middle of march edwin had an issue with a tooth missed some time and he's just making his way back jose bautista a little delayed start to his spring so john gibbons knows that he's pacing himself and we'll see that amped up in the last couple of weeks in march the bautista called out on a pitch he felt was low phil cousy rings him up on that curveball jose had a pretty good look at it and you think Jose's not a competitor in a spring training game in the middle of March? He has an understanding of the strike zone like almost no one in this game. And Jose just felt that that ball missed a little bit off and down. Jose takes a lot of pride in his ability to recognize balls and strikes. And he hopes that the umpires will take pride in it the same way. Every hitter has a different number of at-bats in their head, how many at-bats they need in spring training to prepare, prepare for the season. And Jose's told me before, he knows he's ready when his knowledge of the strike zone is right where it needs to be. And there's an example right there. He really feels that that pitch missed. Phil Cuzzy missed the pitch right there. I think Jose's about ready now after seeing his second at-bat today go over the left field wall. Dominic Brown, pinch hitting. Troy Tulowitzki started in the DH spot, went over two. Brown 
This is his 19th at bat of the spring. He has hit a couple of triples. Takes it downstairs and ball four. Russell Martin. Martin will bat with a man aboard and two down. Schultz just five foot ten, but he is not afraid to come after you. Threw a good curveball there to Jose Bautista. We saw in strike three, but challenging him with some fastballs early. Well, Joe, we know probably better than anybody that height really doesn't have much, much to do with it, does it? <laughs> Ask a young man named Stroman in that Blue Jays clubhouse. Yeah, he has changed everybody's perception of what a prototypical starter should look like. Well, it's not just height either. I think when you look around the game and look even in this Blue Jays uniforms right here, some of the best sluggers in the game, they're not hawking six foot four, 230 pound monsters. Now, some in the game are, but look at Donaldson and his body, Bautista. There goes the runner, strong throw right on the money. Rene Rivera, one of the best at throwing out potential base stealers, threw out 36 and a half percent a year ago. He was third in the majors. Guns down, Dominic Brown. Fans, it's an NBA doubleheader on Sportsnet One. First, Kyle Lowry and the Raptors take on Pau Gasol and the Bulls. Then, Anthony Davis and the Pelicans try and contain Steph Curry and the Warriors. That's tomorrow on Sportsnet One. Overcast day here in Dunedin, Florida. Start of play was 26 degrees, but there have been forecasts of some rain in the area. We haven't seen it just yet. This is Rene Rivera. He threw out Dominic Brown to end the bottom of the sixth. Mentioned Rivera with a great percentage of gunning down potential base stealers. A year ago, Rivera threw out 36.5% of those base stealers and he was third in the major leagues in that department. Russell Martin, of course, led the pack. He threw out 80, 30, excuse me, he threw out 38 and a half percent. Ezekiel Carrera has moved from left field to right field. This was a Bautista has left the ball game. Good arm on Casale on that throw to second base, but what I watch more than anything is the footwork in the exchange. He got rid of that baseball so quickly, got himself into a good position. I always say it starts from the ground up. It's almost like an infielder. The feet have to be right to make that accurate throw. He did it very efficiently. Gavin Floyd has been working on elevating that fastball with two strikes, and so far it's been effective. He has recorded five strikeouts in his two innings of work. Bounce to third. Big hop for Matt Dominguez. Plenty of time. He throws out Rene Rivera. 
It's interesting to watch veterans like Gavin Floyd. He's got a plan, and he wants to come out and experiment with a few things. It looks like he's Second working on two, the location two, of his fastball. Three. You talked about elevating that fastball and how nice that has been, and combined with the breaking balls that Russell Martin has been calling. But this is a veteran that knows how to pitch. The stuff is still there, obviously, despite his injuries, but he's certainly still got enough to get big league hitters up based on what we're seeing today, even though it's a bit of a depleted. Ray's lineup. I like what I see coming out of Gavin Floyd's hand. Yeah, I think that's the one thing you have to evaluate. Here we are in the middle of spring training and just look at the pitches and look at how the hitters react to those various pitches. And understanding that each time out, pitchers like Floyd can continue to get a little bit better with those secondary pitches that we talked about earlier continue to build up strength so that fastball gets that extra mile per hour all of those things will continue to get better and improve as the spring moves forward popped up the Mingus drifting into foul ground waits for it makes the pitch Nick Franklin's retired on the foul pop The Blue Jays made a conscious effort to add depth to their pitching staff. Bringing in Gavin Floyd. They signed him to a major league contract. So he is on the 40 man roster. Taylor Motter goes after that first pitch breaking ball. Motter, the shortstop, has gone 0 for 2 with a strikeout. And I think when you sign a guy to a major league contract, you see something. You see him helping your club at the big league level. Now, will it be in the rotation or in the bullpen? That's the decision probably that lies ahead for John Gibbons and Pete Walker. But, again, we talk about a nice problem to have. Jesse Chavez is another interesting piece because he provides that flexibility. If he starts down in the bullpen, Gibby can just throw him back in the rotation at any point if somebody breaks down at all. So you do have those options. Of course, Drew Hutchison, who we've seen in the spring here, too, is waiting in the wings kind of on the outside looking in a little bit now but there's a guy that can still help this club this year ball gets away from martin drew hutchison won 13 games a year ago and he is certainly in the mix and determined to make it a tough decision on the front office and the coaching staff as to how they're going to set this team up you will need more than five starting pitchers throughout the course of this season most teams are in that 8 to 12 range. You hope not to need more than that, but injuries happen. Guys break down, need time off. You need that depth. Last season, the average in the American League was 10 starting pitchers per team. Dominguez gives ground. He's got a strong arm in time. Another good defensive play from Matt Dominguez over at third. Okay, fan.
There is no better place to watch all the action this season than your very own reserved seat at Rogers Center. Great seats are still available. Call 416-341-1234 or visit BlueJays.com. Great schedule in the month of April, and the Blue Jays will open up against the Boston Red Sox to start their home portion of the 2016 schedule. So make sure you check out the season ticket opportunities. Russell Martin getting another at bat today. Russell's gone the distance so far as he bats here in the seventh inning. Martin is grounded out and struck out. Very underestimated the job that Russell Martin does behind the plate. Right now he's focusing on his hitting, but what a nice job with Sanchez today. This is popped into a bullpen area down there. Well, foul. Russell Martin. He too is learning all about Gavin Floyd. And you know, he has faced Gavin Floyd in the past, has batted. And he's always admired the stuff he has seen from Gavin Floyd. And he told me early in the spring, he said it's just a matter of keeping him on the mound. But if he is healthy, he can be tough. 3 1 2 Russell Martin. Bounced foul again. Now it's a 3 2 count. And it's so different. Russell had not caught Floyd yet in a ball game. So he's caught him on the side sessions. But it's so different, he said, too. And you catch him on the side, of course, you see their pitches, what they want to do. And you can talk all you want. But until you get in that game situation and see them face hitters, it all changes. And that's what. Today is going to be very beneficial to both of them. There's a high pop up into right field. And the second baseman goes out. That's Kiri Kudo who's come in to play second base. And very much of defensive changes here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Jamie Schultz is the fourth pitcher to work for Tampa Bay. Justin Smoke. Justin Smoke, the first baseman. He's got over for 2. Smoke, another Blue Jays hitter, making a subtle adjustment in his stance, trying to be a little bit more 50-50 with his weight distribution and not swaying too far forward. The Rays play the shift as Smoke grounds out. The right fielder number three is... Gavin Floyd has joined us from the dugout. Gavin, good outing again today, and it looked like he got zeroed in pretty good with that high fastball. Yeah, I, um, just really trying to get after my fastball and, uh, you know, be aggressive with it, you know, um, and uh, got, got some good swings on uh, guys going after it. Gavin, do you feel like even the veteran that you are, it, it allows you to continue to build on each performance as you get out there, continue to build strength with the velocity on your fastball, but also the sharpness on your secondary pitches? Yeah, I mean, that's uh, spring. You know, it's a it's a development of, uh, you know, reps and and consistency of each pitch. You know, I'm uh, trying to build off each one and, and uh, you know, continue to grow. Gavin, you got nearly 10 years of big league service. Is this spring training camp any different than the others for you? It's definitely special because I'm, you know, able to throw again and and uh, have an opportunity here with the Blue Jays and and uh, uh, definitely uh, excited about this year. Good to see you healthy again, Gavin. Congratulations on a good outing here today. Thank you, guys. That's Gavin Floyd who had another good outing today. Blue Jays go quietly in their half of the seventh. Okay. We'll go to the eighth. It's a 4 1 Blue Jays lead.
Blue Jays fans, if you're catching a game in the U.S., you can share all your experiences as they happen with friends and fans back home. With Rome Like Home from Rogers, you can use your phone exactly like you do at home, starting at $5 a day in the U.S. Go to rogers.com slash Rome Like Home for details. Well, if you were down here and wanted to call home today, you could say, hey, I saw Jose Bautista at his first home run of the spring. Well, Jose has a terrific fan following. Steve Delabar will be the third Blue Jay pitcher to work this afternoon. Aaron Sanchez went four strong innings, followed up by Gavin Floyd. Now Steve Delabar. Delabar working in his fourth game this spring. Had his struggles at the big league level last year, trying to stick. He is out of options this year, so the Blue Jays would have to hang on to him or risk losing him through waivers. Delabar, former All-Star, made the All-Star team in 2013. Mentioned Delabar and Gavin Floyd. They are catch partners at the start of each day, and they, too, have gone through that dramatic surgery, the injury of their broken elbow. They've got metal plates and many, many screws in their respective elbows, but they continue to pitch at a very high level. Kyle Roller has driven in the only raised run of the ball game. He had an RBI double off the fence in center field in the fifth. Gavin Floyd went three innings, allowed two hits in that run. Didn't walk about it and struck out five. Check swing and a called strike two and two. Delabar with an even count to Kyle Roller, the first baseman. Good fastball by Delabar. He'll be around 93-94 with that slider and split finger pitch. They see that right here. He throws all four seam fastballs, but he's trying to move in both sides of the plate. Steve Delabar with a strikeout trying to get a spot in that bullpen. And for more on the bullpen, let's check in with Hazel May. Buck, you and Joe uh, talked about guys who could help the team earlier. Veteran reliever Randy Choate reported to camp yesterday morning after signing a minor league deal with the Blue Jays. John Gibbons calls the 40-year-old the, quote, ultimate lefty specialist. You see, last season with the St. Louis Cardinals, 80% of the batters he faced hit from the left side. So Choate will certainly come in handy when you're facing the likes of a Chris Davis or a David Ortiz there in the AL East. As for when he'll be ready to pitch, Choate says uh, he's not a hard thrower. He's not a guy who goes two to three innings. So he may need just a bullpen or two to get into game shape. And Buck Choate is certainly insurance if Aaron Loop is out an extended period of time. Well, Hazel, he sure is. And you're right. He doesn't need much to get ready. Johnny Field comes up with a base hit, his first hit in three trips. Randy Choate last year, pitching for the Cardinals, appeared in 71 games. And he pitched 27 in a third innings. <laughs> so he is the epitome of a one-man specialist. Well, I'm sure what John Gibbons is thinking, the lefty specialist. And he had his struggles against left-handers last year, but in his career he's been very good. But I'm sure John Gibbons is thinking Chris Davis, David Ortiz, some of those big left-handed bats in the American League East Division. He could come in very handy. Randy Choate led the American League in appearances on with the Rays in 2010, he appeared in 85 games and again just 44 in two-thirds innings. He said, I only throw in the low 80s. I can get ready very fast. <laughs> this is Dyron Verona, who came in defensively getting his first at bat. He flies out to... Dalton Pompey and left. Pompey entered the game defensively in the seven. There have only been eight hits in the ball game. Blue Jays and Rays have four apiece. With the big blow in the ball game, Jose Bautista's first home run of the spring, a three run home run in the third inning. Part of a four run inning. Ryan Brath playing in center field. Brett entered the game defensively in the six, getting his first at bat. The 
bit of looping pop to the second baseman, David Adams. Steve Delabar with a good inning of work. The bullpen trying to sort things out for the Blue Jays. Fans, the Houston Astros are heading to Dunedin to take on the Blue Jays. That's this Friday. It's the first of three games that weekend right here on Sportsnet. Join us at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific time. Next weekend, we will have all three games over the weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. The Houston Astros, as Hazel mentioned, and then Philadelphia and Pittsburgh to round out the season. Justin Marks into the ball game, the lefty coming in relief of Jamie Schultz, who is pretty good. Marks had success against left-handers last year, especially had to struggle against righty in Triple A. Marks is the fifth Rays pitcher to work this afternoon. David Adams goes out to the first pitch and lines up to the second baseman. Adams. In his first at bat of the afternoon, hit it hard, but right at the second baseman. Well, they had him played perfectly. Good swing by Adams, staying inside this baseball. And I think he may have gotten jammed a hair. But positioned perfectly, taking the base hit away. Gio Meyer took over defensively at shortstop after Ryan Goins started at short. Meyer appearing in his 11th game of the spring. Hits this one toward left field, and that's going to get past the left field and go all the way to the wall. Brian Brett, the center fielder, plays it off the wall. Gio Meyer has a one-out double for Meyer. That's his second double of the spring. Comes against the lefty, Justin Marks. Center fielder number 48. There's that depth that we're talking about with the Blue Jays signing players like Gio right here does a nice job going and down getting this off speed pitch from the lefty drilling it into the left center field gap. But this would be a nice piece to have in Triple A Buffalo. You have to guard against injury in this game and because injuries are so rampant. Gio has shown very well to his big league coaches here in spring training. Junior Lake inning his second at bat of the afternoon rounding out the shortstop it's only time up they came into this game four for 17 a 235 average he's driven in a run foul tip into the glove of the catcher new catcher behind the plate is Jake Depew Rene Rivera started now. DePew has moved behind the plate. Oh, good 
fastball kind of tied up Junior Lake that it up and in. Good location with that fastball too. If you can elevate it a little bit and get it on the inner part of the plate, you could see Lake was just a little late getting to that spot. Fastball beat him. Human two. We're in the bottom of the eighth. Blue Jays scored all their runs in the bottom of the third. Tampa Bay got its run in the top of the fifth. The pitchers have had the upper hand here this afternoon. Jill Myers at second. He had a one out double to the wall in left center. Ball in the dirt. Junior Lake, the right-handed bat in that competition for the extra outfield spot. He's trying to do what he can. Got a lot of upside, of course. Got parts of a couple seasons in the big leagues. Trying to open eyes also in this camp. Base hit to left field. Jill Myers going to come around to score. That ball goes all the way to the wall. Junior Lake drives it around with a stand-up double. For Lake, his second RBI of the spring. Well, Marks had gone with some soft breaking balls as well as the fastballs in. This time it's back in there, but Lake makes the adjustment, gets the bat head out, and he just drills this ball into the left field corner, easily scoring the run. Good piece of hitting from Junior Lake. And again, when you're trying to impress coaches, trying to win a spot on a roster, those are the things that help. Lake is one for two with an RBI. Matt Dominguez batting for a second time. Dominguez took over for Josh Donaldson. End of the ball game is a pinch runner in the third. He grounded out in the sixth. We mentioned this was a split squad game. Tampa Bay is home in Port Charlotte and they're putting a beating on the Boston Red Sox. They lead the Red Sox 13 to 3. Junior Lake was running on the pitch. He steps on third and comes in to score as Matt Dominguez drives in the second run of the inning. Well Junior Lake and continuing to try to impress he already did with an RBI double. But now he's trying to show off his speed. Watch the jump he gets. He gets a little walking lead. Gets a great jump to steal third base right here. But Matt Dominguez says, I'm not going to give up this juicy pitch. He smashes it right back up the middle to add to that Blue Jays lead. 6-1 Jays. Matt Dominguez with the RBR. His second of the spring. Don Pompey, the switch hitter, batting right-handed against Sparks. Pompey. Three for 17 so far this spring. This is his first at bat of the afternoon. He took over for Bautista and moved to left field. Bautista started in the right. Jose playing for the first time defensively in the outfield. Had a good day at the plate. Had a three-run home run in the third inning. Popped up over near the seats and the wind will blow it out of play. to hit the bat boy just beyond the screen and that hit him flush. They got that protective screen up, but boy, oh boy. 
ball got around that screen and cut him flush. You could hear it sound like they hit a bat. Well, you know, he was behind the screen, but with the angle towards home plate off the bat of Dalton Pompey, he was not protected. Pompey bows it off into the seats. That's what happens in spring training. The coaches and the bat boys, they're outside of the dugout to make room. There's an awful lot of bodies. They usually put a screen in front, but if you get too many bodies in there, you're not necessarily pre protected behind that screen. Well, you can see a lot of coaches have taken a seat outside of the dugout just so they can see the field better. Pompey strikes up. Second out of the end. The dugouts here in the spring training ballparks are small. They obviously cater to the Florida State League most of the time, and there's just not enough room for everybody to get in the dugout and have a good look at the field. Dominic Brown walked in his only plate appearance this afternoon, hitting in the fourth spot in the batting order. The Blue Jays will have an off day tomorrow, a rarity in spring training. They will have three off days. Tomorrow is the first of three. And you can bet it's a welcome day. They'll have an off day tomorrow, then another on the 21st next Monday. And the final off day will be Thursday, March 31st, and the Blue Jays will travel to Montreal for that two-game weekend series on Friday, April 1st, and Saturday afternoon, April 2nd. It's a welcome day off for John Gibbons and his players. It's right in that kind of that midpoint or in the middle of the month where guys don't have to even show up at the ballpark. Go get a golf game in. Go some, enjoy some time with your family. Whatever you might do just to get away for a day before they amp up again. You know who really enjoys off days? Broadcasters? <laughs> All the coaches, absolutely. The coaches, I tell you what, they put in long hours. They are here before the sun comes up to lay out the plans for the day's work load and then they work a lot a lot of side sessions a lot of extra batting practice in the tunnels and they deserve an off day it's a very well orchestrated camp there's an awful lot going on throughout the course of the day before this one o'clock ball game the morning is very full you see bodies all over the backfield the little half fields the batting cages that's all scheduled and orchestrated it's a high pop Brandon Getzman comes in and makes the catch over near the foul line. So the Blue Jays have scored two in the bottom of the eighth. We'll go to the ninth. Six one. Blue Jays. Brought to you by Scott's Turf Builder Grass Seed with Water Smart Plus Coating. Grows grass quicker and thicker. Guaranteed.
Well, the youngster Taylor Guerrero getting the start today for the Rays, and he left this pitch on the inner half of the plate to Jose Bautista, and he learned in a hurry you cannot do that. Jose does a lot of damage. He did it on that pitch, giving the Blue Jays a four to nothing lead. That three-run shot back in the third inning over the left field wall. Two-time home run champ Jose Bautista is pounding out 243 home runs for the Blue Jays. He has averaged 37.8 home runs per season since 2010. That's the best in the American League. Donald Leon comes on to try to close things out for the Blue Jays here in the ninth. Leon came over. He was purchased by the Oakland from the Oakland A's for cash. Pitching in his third spring game. This is another one of those arms that the Blue Jays are looking at as that depth piece, but he's out of options. So he's another one that a decision will have to be made on him here before the end of spring training. To explain the option process, players have options, and it depends on when they sign. They might have three options. They might have four options, but Leon is out of options. So in order for the Blue Jays to send him to AAA Buffalo, he'll have to pass through waivers. Everybody would have to pass on him, and then he would go to the minor leagues. It just depends on the timing of things as to who might pass through waivers and who might get claimed. Pulled on the ground. Casey Kotsman will go to the bag and retire James Loney, who finishes up the afternoon over four. Sometimes a player can make an opening day roster, but then maybe early in the season when you figure most teams are set and they're not interested in grabbing somebody at the major league level, you feel as a club that you can sneak them through waivers. And I say sneak because really it's maybe a player that probably would not sneak through those waivers, but if you can get them through and continue to attain him and have him in the minor leagues again for that depth that we're talking about. This is Christian Video. He is playing at third base, and he goes after the first pitch and grounds out. Caribios grounds out to the second baseman, and Leon records two quick outs here in the ninth. Sanchez started. He went four innings, allowed just one hit, no runs, walked a batter, and struck out four. Gavin Floyd came on to go three good innings. He allowed a run on two hits, no walks, and five strikeouts. Steve Delabar had a good inning. Delabar worked one inning, had a walk and a strikeout. Now, Leon with two quick outs here in the ninth. up on the infield. David Adams coming in, and that'll do it. The Blue Jays retire the Rays in order in the ninth, and they win it 6-1 to improve to 10-2-1 for the spring. Joe, the pitchers again dominant this afternoon. A very well-pitched game, and it was led by Aaron Sanchez on the mound today, followed by Gavin Floyd. Both two guys that the Blue Jays are looking at to fill the back of this Blue Jays rotation. Whoever does not win that spot could be a very valuable piece in the bullpen. And once again, it was the Jose Bautista show with a big three-run homer. We'll be back on the air next Friday afternoon. The Houston Astros will be here in the need to take on the Blue Jays. It all starts at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, 10 a.m. Pacific. The Blue Jays win it 6-1 here against Tampa Bay. And Jose Bautista with his first home run of the sprint. Another good outing for Aaron Sanchez. Same for Gavin Floyd. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next Friday. Have a great afternoon, folks.